that this is a historic fossil. I just reinstalled a sink. I need to catch you up. <laughs> Oh hello guys, good morning. Today is the day that we start the downstairs loo makeover at my mum and dad's house. I've been trying to get started on this project for weeks now. I have got all of the goods that I need, I hope, fingers crossed, because driving anywhere around this area takes at least 15 minutes to get to any sort of DIY shop and pack. So it takes a good chunk out of my day. So I'm hoping that I've managed to pick everything up that I need for this project in advance. I've already measured up. I did that the other week and I'm looking today to just get the panels on the wall along with the molding to go around the top of the panels. And then I need to figure out what I'm doing underneath the sink. By the way, I just want to say that my outfit is from Next. These are my favorite new DIY clothes. I've got a white t-shirt on and then these dungarees. They fit so nicely and they've got ripped in the knees like fashion icon but DIY let it be known and then I've got my little slippers on as well because I have to be comfy anyway let's go downstairs I start to take everything out of the room so the mirrors the picture frames the plants plant stands I'm even going to take the towel rail holders and toilet roll holders off and the toilet is no longer in bounds so that just means DIY is a go so let's get it all cleaned up and we can start with the paneling process here i'm using it my trusted i love this thing this is my laser level i bought it from amazon about three years ago and i use it on every single project i will leave that link down below for you essentially here i'm just marking out where i want my panel in to sit with a little bit of a gap for my molding to sit on top of that because we've got a light switch so i needed to account for the height of that Taking the outside to cut with my circular mitre saw, whatever you've got on hand, a normal hand saw would work as well. And then we're going to bring that in and stick it to the wall with some no nails glue and some panel pins on top. Just as I thought, these walls aren't 100% straight. So I've had to cut this piece of board at an angle. You'll see here it starts thicker at the top and then it gets much thinner towards the bottom. Um, that's the only way that it's actually gonna fit in the gap. The way that I did that was measured the top section and I got that at 41.3 centimeters. The bottom section was 40.3 centimeters. I marked them both up, connected them with a line and then I just cut up that line and it's managed to fit. I wasn't concentrating when I was cutting it, it went a little bit skew with. I'm gonna need to bring it around the window and down here like this underneath those tiles and I need to figure out what's happening with this toilet. So, fingers crossed. I need to catch you up. <laughs> I thought I would just have to undo two screws that held the cistern into the wall, tilt it forward slightly and put this behind. That is what I've always done with the toilets. Well, I may have done it once, but that's what I did with the last toilet. And it turns out, actually, that I had to take the whole entire toilet seat off. And this is what we've ended up looking like. <laughs> the cistern down here, we tried to take it away from the wall. The screws all look like this. But this is a historic fossil. I have had to force the toilet system off the wall. Been left with the most humongous holes, which I'm gonna have to patch so that we can put the to new toilet seat back in place. I got it off the wall. You did? Yeah. Awesome. Wow. And then look at all this. I don't know what this is as well. I don't understand. I've condensed these clips so it doesn't really show how stressful the situation was, but I decided to call it a day and we would start again tomorrow with a clear head. Morning guys, it's another day. I measured up the distance to the window, down from the window, down to this piping that you should see here. Mocked it all up, templated it onto the board, brought it outside, cut it all down. I had to do a few trips, so don't think I'm like getting it right on the first time. If I were better at what I do, I probably would, but you know, try and error. So it took a few times going back and forth. So now we're at the position where I'm happy with the shape. I've put it up against the wall, both sides and they look good. So I'm essentially gonna just glue them up, pin them in with a brand nail gun. In order to be able to get the panel in behind the sink. I don't want to just cut it around the sink. I just think that will look pretty shabby. I want to do a proper job. But in order to do that, I have needed to cut the sealant or the silicone. And now I've realized I actually need to get under here, undo the taps so that I can take away from these brackets. I've switched off the tap from underneath the sink, which is the main water supply and source so that I can remove these without any water going everywhere, fingers crossed. <laughs> and then I can pull it away, put the boards in and yeah, that's it. That should be it anyway, fingers crossed. I've got to child.
Just in case you don't know, priming MDF is particularly important because MDF is a very porous material and it will eat up all of your paint. So make sure to do one or two coats of primer before you go in with your paint on top. And another top tip I've learned recently is to cut your caulk tip at an angle. Just do it, honestly. Do it, you will see the difference, it is amazing. And also, when you're doing this part here, I have used these Wolfcraft tools, which I find so incredibly helpful. I'll link them down below for you. Spritz the area with some soapy, fairy liquid water, and then use a damp sponge, and it will be the nicest finish you've ever seen. Hello, another day of the downstairs loo transformation. On the agenda is I need to fix this toilet cistern and I need to fix the leaky tap in the sink situations. And in case you're wondering, it might not be the same in your house, but I think for most houses, uh, to switch the water off so that nothing runs through the taps, you go under your sink and somewhere deep in the depths, there will be a tap. I want to turn that to the right, which should shut it off. Come up here. There we go. So that is on. I've just opened the tap faucet, but it's actually not running anymore. And similarly, if I come here, they've switched off straight away. So you know, I'm using this wrench that I picked up from Screwfix the other day for like three pounds. This is really handy because it, the way that it's shaped to go up like that, it's so much easier for opening pipes. And then I also picked up some Pre-Stex washers, which are basically fiber washers in two sizes three quarters and a half an inch because I didn't know which size we needed and then I bought some assorted plumbing rings which are made of rubber. Apparently you can use both of them, it's not an issue to use either or. I'm really not sure what the difference is between them but there were fibre ones in there before and they lasted 20 odd years so I'm going to put fibre ones back. So let's get started. Okay, now I'm just gonna match up which one fits. And these ones are the half inch, just for reference. This sink, this whole bathroom hasn't been maintained in like 30 years. So what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna do a bit of maintenance, taking out the old taps, removing all the gunk that you see in the thread. And then I'm gonna clean the hole in the background. You can see a bit of silicone there. Now I'm gonna go in with some PFT E-tape. I think that's the right acronym on the mail part and then close it all up and it should be watertight now. Okay, I'm always gonna keep it real with you guys. Since putting this on Instagram, cause it went live over there first, if you're not following me then do, I've had a lot of professional plumbers and professional handymen say to me, you actually don't need to silicone these taps into the sink. It should be enough to just put them in and use the rubber and the seal to keep them locked in place and watertight. However, I just felt a little bit more confident using the silicone to make sure that it was stuck in place. And I've since learned that you don't actually need to use PTFE tape on water pipes. They should become watertight with the correct seal in place. So hopefully that fine Fiber washer is all good. Oh my god, it feels incredibly dry. I just reinstalled a sink, like taken it all apart, maintained it, and put it back together. I think so. I think so. Oh my god, I'm so proud of me. This thing is heavy, but look at the bottom of this. This is the cistern. You can see how um, De deprecated is that the word it's literally falling apart let's um first of all clean the bottom of this system literally pull this bit off that's a bit of metal just rusting in my hands I cannot tell you how many times I had to go to DIY stores to pick up the correct tools, but this wrench I think will be a really good friend of mine for a long time it is an incredible wrench got a really good arm span if that's the correct word but it helped me take this off look how decrepit this is and you know we had to replace it so we're putting a new one on but we're just going to make sure we're going to maintain it over the years because you know things you just forget about things you think they're all good but you need to keep maintaining them so that's something that if you take a tip from this video today do maintenance and all your pipes and all your stuff in your house just get it done it will save you all the bother in the long run but on a slightly more tragic note this was the moment i knew i messed up cut the cameras so remember earlier I had explained I usually just put the panel behind the toilet 
and everything's a-okay. Well, in this case, it wasn't. And this is something you're gonna wanna hear just in case you wanna try this project out yourself. Shoving a piece of wood behind the cistern is gonna offset how the cistern is then able to sit flush against the wall. I was not able to get the cistern back on the toilet and get it flush against the wall. So I had to take the whole toilet bottom, whatever you call it, off chip away at the grout I was able to wiggle the whole thing forward a bit and then get the cistern flush against the wall this is extremely frustrating by the way and I would suggest you do this with someone else a so that you don't lose your mind and b so that you don't end up cracking and breaking the toilet but I felt such a sense of achievement knowing I'd moved the whole toilet myself and I'd also managed to replace everything inside that was old and ruined I always like to keep it real with you guys so I just want to show you how much stuff really does go wrong when I'm doing these DIYs nothing's perfect breathe and just make sure you take your time honestly you can get anything done i believe in you but that is it for today's video i'm going to hit you with part two as soon as possible and i hope that you enjoyed this make sure to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next one i actually can't believe that i did that i just need to tighten it up a bit more oh my god thank you lord i've been very very busy guys that was so stupid Shadow. you should have just double checked your measurements <laughs> Just can't stop thinking about